Hi, I'm Patty Whipfler from Hand in Hand Parenting, and I'm here to talk about the first tool that we recommend that parents use of the five listening tools that uh, Tasha Shore and I have written about in this book, Listen, Five Simple Tools for Meeting Your Everyday Parenting Challenges. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about special time. Uh, it's very simple, but the uses of special time are probably infinite. Um, and the idea is, the, the overarching idea of the whole book is that children function at their best when they feel connected. Connection is a feeling. Uh, children don't feel connected because you are trying to connect or you are offering connection. Um, they feel connected when you know, when their system allows that feeling to blossom. And there are many things you can do to influence their sense of connection with you. You can't make it happen, but you can do things that allow a child to feel safe, allow a child to feel your attention, allow a child to feel their own power and your permission to explore and try things. And under those conditions, children feel closer and closer and closer to you. You know, offering that kind of opportunity lets a child really feel your love. It's a delivery system for all the love you have for your child. And that's why special time is so good, is that you want to deliver your love and your caring, some of the time at least, and your child really wants and needs that love and caring. But if the delivery system isn't working, um, both of you can become frustrated and upset and even disappointed with one another. So special time builds connection. It builds connection reliably. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it's like it takes like five seconds. Um, yeah, but it's a very dependable way to help your child feel your love to help your child feel your caring and to help your child develop their own picture of the world and their ability to learn from the things that happen to them. Um, so it's a really good tool. It's the tool we invite parents to lead with much of the time uh, because it's so handy and it works in so many different situations. So here's what special time is. The special time you you choose a time when your energy is you know halfway decent. Uh, you choose a time when you're feeling generous towards your child, when you're feeling interested in them, and you say to your child, "Hey, I've got ten minutes. I'll give you ten minutes of special time. You can do whatever you want to do. I'll play whatever you want to play. What would you like to play?" And so you offer them yourself, really. And that's really all you have to do to start special time um, with, well, there's actually one more thing. You want to set a timer. You want this time to be demarcated as there's a beginning and an end to your 100% undivided attention. And so you on your end are responsible for not allowing your attention to be divided. You know, not being tempted during a, a game of uh, shoots and ladders or parcheesi um, to pick the lint off of the carpet, you know. Um, so your attention is 100% on your child and your delight in your child. It's a, it's a delight delivery system. And um, then your child's job is to figure out how they want to receive your attention, what they want to do while you're shining it at them. And it's your job to be pleased with whatever that is and to try to make it work. So um, <laughs> if you've got a really young child and they want to drop, you know, drop toys in the bathtub that really can't be soaked, um, you do have to set a limit. I'm sorry, sweetie, your teddy bear can't go in the bathtub. He won't be so soft and cuddly when you pop him in there. And then, and then your job is to, let's, so you want to find something else? Let's try something else. And if your child bursts into tears because they, you didn't let them put their teddy bear in the tub, although you said they could do what they wanted to do, 
Um, then you assume that your child wants to have a cry during this special time and needs to have a cry. And what you can do is be pleased with your child. I'm sorry, sweetie. Yeah, you wanted to give your teddy a bath. Mm -hmm. I'm right here. We, no, and you don't solve it for him. Oh, honey, maybe we could give him a pretend bath. Here, I'll get a little thing over here. You can put him in the pretend bath. No. Your child has chosen to have a disappointment during special time and is using your attention to clear out that disappointment and maybe some others if the cry goes on a long time. Um, this is what children do when we offer our full attention. Sometimes they want to use our attention to heal from hurt, to heal from disappointment, you know, to heal from the reaction that they have to a limit being set, a necessary limit. Now, I'm not sure that no teddy in the tub is a necessary limit. In some families it would be, and in other families it's like, okay, you know, and then you just dry the teddy bear off as best you can and don't not worry too much about whether his fur is the same as it was. So, um, so you, you give yourself, you give your delight, and you go along with what your child wants to try. And your child decides what they want to do. And they may or may not show you that they're receiving your delight, that they're receiving your attention. Um, however, over time, if you use special time on a regular basis, maybe five minutes a day, or if you've got three children, 10 minutes a day for one, 10 minutes a day for the next, 10 minutes a day for the third. Um, you know, you, you, you decide what you can manage. Um, but over time, children come to feel much, much closer and much, much safer with you because there are these times when they have you, you and your full attention and your delight all to themselves and because you will let them try things that they think of, or even try one thing for one minute and one thing for another minute and one thing for a third minute and try five or 10 different things in 10 minutes. But you won't tell them, honey, let's just stay with this right now. You won't try to teach them something. You won't try to find a, a letter E in their scribbles and point it out to them being becoming the teacher. You're just the loving parent. You're not the teacher. You're not the corrector. You're not the instructor. You're not the, oh, did you see that? What can we learn from that? Yeah. Just let your child figure it out. And um, special time can be used in several different kinds of situations to make them make the situations easier on your child and sometimes easier on you. So here's the kinds of things you can do with special time. Um, you can use it when your child is facing a challenging situation. So one mom I know used it when her child started clinging to her leg, her four-year-old, um, when they were at a, a gathering of neighbors and friends. And there were children there to play with, but she just wanted mommy and she didn't want mommy to go talk to anybody. And mommy had come to talk to the people who were there. She'd been looking forward to it. And um, she just asked her daughter if she wanted to do special time. And because it was a practice, her daughter had an immediate idea of what she wanted to do with it. Um, she knew special time and she you know, immediately kind of got into that, I'm now connecting with mommy mode. And she said, mommy, you know, let's be birdies. Let's make a nest under the table. And there was a table there with hors d'oeuvres on it and had a long um, tablecloth. And they crawled under the table to be down there together. And they made a little pretend nest. And first her daughter was the birdie and she fed the little baby birdie very carefully all this food that it liked. And then the daughter wanted the mommy to be the bir baby birdie. So mommy was baby birdie and her daughter fed her and they just had a sweet little time caring for one another down there under the hors d'oeuvres table. And when the mom's watch went off, okay, sweetie, that's five minutes. I'm gonna go back to the party. Let's go see who's there. Her daughter pops out and goes running over to the other children who were in the backyard. And that was the end of the clinginess. So it probably won't happen like that for you right away. Um, that's the kind of thing that can happen when special time is a regular practice, when your child gets your attention 
demarcated, called special time, um, like that, on a, you know, often. Then they can orient themselves. They can receive the connection you're offering much, much more quickly. And it really does make a difference. You can use special time, I think, um, when siblings are, you know, having a hard time and the hard time is going from day to day, you know, you can do special time with one sibling, do special time with the other sibling. And then when you come in to try to help them with one more difficulty, um, they can open up their feelings and be listened to by you much more quickly. Um, and the solution, because the feelings get a chance to pour out, the solution can be cobbled together more easily after they've had their feelings. So it makes it safe enough for children to show you their hard issues and unload the feelings that drive those issues. So it's a, it's a leading tool in undoing tangles and snarls that have been there for a long time. Um, I'm gonna think what else did I think of? Um, it's it's a, a, a way to um, lead into helping children learn. So one tutor who knows hand in hand says that her whole tutoring practice changed so much for the better um, when she started giving 10 minutes of special time to every child who came to her for tutoring. And she would let them have the run of you know two rooms of, of her home. She taught in her home and they could do whatever they wanted. They loved that part of, the, of tutoring. And by the time it was time to end the special time, their minds would be met in much better shape for learning because they felt connected, because they, they got to drive the relationship. They got to drive what happened with an adult, um, whereas they'd been driven by you know, what the adult wanted in their classroom all day long. So it's a really good way to connect with your child. It's a really good way to um, build a, a, a good picture of what your child loves, what they are confused about, um, what they want to explore, and um, just a way to kind of learn your child from the inside out because what children choose during special time always tells you something about their interests, their issues, and their experience. So um, in Listen, um, I, I thought I would let you know a couple of the stories that might be interesting to you in there. Um, in Listen, one of the stories that we tell is a, a mother of eight who is coming home from a long day at work. She works in the evenings. She didn't get home till 9.30. And uh, her three youngest girls are up and really wanting to be with her. And how she did special time with each one and what each child did with it, um, which was different, and how they were able to, you know, she was able to put them to sleep, feeling connected, feeling heard and seen, feeling like she cared and loved them, although she'd been gone all through the afternoon and evening. Um, there's another story, let's see. Oh, there's a story about a dad who's taking his child to preschool and his child is doesn't want to say goodbye. You know, his child is starting to whine and no, no, daddy, don't go. And his brilliant idea is to do five minutes of special time. And the children were outside playing by the time he got there with his son. So um, he gave his son five minutes of special time in the classroom. And his son showed him this and showed him that and you know, kind of gave him just, or, you know, told his dad all about what was there and what he liked. And, you know, by the time five minutes was up, you know, his dad said, shall we go out and see the children and, you know, so you can play with them before I leave. And his son was perfectly happy and willing to go. He felt connected. He felt seen and heard. He'd gotten his dad's attention and now he could use it to go out and really be there. Um, and I, I think there are other stories there um, and many anecdotes that use special time to solve problems that are similar to problems you've seen in your family. So I hope it's useful to you. It's a really good and interesting tool. And um, it, it's one that, <laughs> I'll just tell you one more thing. Uh, 
my younger son, when he went to uh, university, I went, I traveled down 500 miles to where he was and saw him for the first time after he'd been there about, I don't know, two months. And I felt like I was paying really good attention to him all weekend long. You know, we, we went out to dinner. I took a couple of roommates out to dinner. We walked around the campus. You know, I listened to him talk about what was going on. But, you know, Sunday afternoon came around and he looks at me and says, Mom, when are we going to do special time? <laughs> it was not what I would expect, but um, it really, I don't know, there's just some way where, you know, this is how we connect and I really pay attention to you and you can depend on me. I will be there for that. And I will be delighted with who you are and what we're doing. And um, sometimes you have to work hard and, you know, to be delighted with who they are and what they're doing. Uh, but that's your job. And you can do that work with another listening tool, which I'll introduce later, the listening partnership. Hang in with us, experiment with this, and I'll see you again soon.